Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you how to carry on Warwick Jungle after all the changes they did recently with nerfing healing and also nerfing hill cut. At this point, it is definitely worth it on Warwick not to go for Divine Sunderer or Bork Rush, as cheesy and as nice as those can be. At this point, it is a lot better to go for Sunfire Aegis. It gives you loads of on-hit damage with its Flame Touch, synergizes super well with your W and with our runes. After Sunfire Aegis, you're usually gonna go for Titanic. Titanic is extremely useful since it is also uh, on hit. After Titanic, you can go for Thornmel, Deadman's Force in Nature, those type of fun things. I would like to start on my blue buff and invade into Zack. Their level, their level one, I don't think is that good. Zack's level one's terrible for fighting to the death. I'm a little surprised it invaded. For our runes, we took Lethal Temple with Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Cosmic Insight, and Magical Footwear. Attack speed 80 and armor. It's more important than ever to get an early jump on your balmy cinder. So with going free boots, it makes that a little bit easier and we don't have to worry about wasting gold on boots to where we can get our Sunfire Aegis very fast. Not a huge fan of the Resolve Tree at the moment. It got a very unfair nerf while simultaneously the other runes weren't really nerfed, so. That is why I think on hit's gonna be a lot better at this point, and Lethal Tempo is a lot better than Press the Attack now on Warwick. I think Lethal Tempo is already better, but there's still a lot of Warwick players running Press the Attack. But now that everyone gets more HP and more armor per level, every champion across the board, fights are a little bit more drawn out, which lets W Max Warwick and Lethal Tempo Warwick it gives it more room to shine in these extended style situations so i'm gonna go ahead do a four camp invade three camp invade it would be a little bit too fast invading a zach because zach's one of the slowest clearers in the game i'd rather just fight him when he's on his blue or possibly when he's doing his blue and gromp at the same time with all these changes i don't think it was actually beneficial for tank junglers by any means because they didn't actually nerf any max health damage style items such as leandries or demonic nor did they nerf true damage items such as kraken slayer nor did they nerf max health damage style champions or true damage champions so i don't think tanks are any better this patch i think specifically champions that rely on sork shoes or lethality it was a, essentially a nerf for them zach lost loads of hp this should be at least one kill for me i wish i had ghost instead of flash here i'm gonna hold on to my e block that attack i could have smited the blob I'll queue for this. Nice. And uh, all right, Zach did a tight clear. He did, only did four camps. It might be best for us to do scuttle off that. Looks like I got a blue buff and a red buff out of him because they're both the same time. So he refreshed them both on me. I'm gonna go ahead, drop my fear on this and then we'll cross over with our smite. R is looking decently gankable here. I'll use my W crossover a bit faster. It also puts pressure on her. She might think I'm going to gank. Good job by Morgana for shoving. Their bot lane could rotate on me here. Doesn't look like they are. Warwick is a decent counter to Zack in the early game. With his knockups, you can completely dodge the CC with your Q since your Q avoids displacements, knockups, knockbacks, that type of stuff. So pretty good against Zack. When he's in midair and he's about to hit you, you can just hold down Q and easily dodge it. At this point, we could back and get Bommy Cinder. Morgana is coming in for the roam. So I'll go ahead and approach from the front. Our timing there is pretty solid, aligned with the Morgana. I need her to land a snare, though. Got the Q dash into fear. Oh, that's so good. That, that's actually worth, though, I think. Even though our AD carry ended up dying. She probably took a turret shot. On our first back, like I said, we can get Bomby Cinder, which is extremely good. That is exactly what we want. If you don't rush Bomby Cinder, and if you don't go for Tiamat, if you don't rush either of them, your AoE clears are trash, and it forces you to do more invades and more ganks, which can be super hit or miss. <laughs> The Balmy Cinder, it doesn't really hurt your one versus ones, and it doesn't hurt your ganks. So overall, it gives you more options, 
And for those of you wondering, well, why not just go for Tiamat? Uh, Tiamat's not bad on Warwick by any means. You can still go for a Titanic Rush, especially if you're particularly fed. But ultimately, Titanic is more expensive than Sunfire Aegis. And uh, Tiamat is more expensive than Balmy Cinder. So you're more consistently going to be able to back and get Balmy Cinder on your first back. Which is a nice little uh, consistency spike for Warwick. Big fight going on over here. They're extremely low. Good job by Mord. Got his R down on Zack. Zack's over ganking a bit. His best gank would probably be ganking bot lane, going for the Seraphine. Leech a bit of XP. Now we're level 6. 6 minutes in. It's really early 6. I don't know I don't have uh, Oracles. We should have gotten that pretty much at the start. Laid a ward reset for it. Is there anything up over here? Alright, he's Gromp's down. I'll play for his red buff spawn. Maybe be able to kill Arya. If Morgana lands Snare or her stun, that should be a kill. She got R A R. She didn't really burn anything. It's pretty decent. We'll look for the invade now on Zach. We don't have any attack speed yet. It doesn't matter though, because Lethal Tempo is 80% bonus attack speed. They're bot lane. Eh, they might be rotating. It's hard to tell. Had to use Q when I can no longer reach him with my autos. Ari's here as well. Got it. Red buff. That's actually huge, so he couldn't smite it. She's dead 100%. Set ended up not coming. It's straight up one versus two when Ari had uh, Ignite as well. Very nice. And that is without Tima. That's just with the Bobby Cinder HP. Balmy Cinder plays a lot better with Lethal Tempo Warwick than Pressy Attack Warwick. Pressy Attack Warwick's more bursty. So having Balmy's doesn't play for that very well. Having damage plays better for Pressy Attack, but Balmy Cinder keeps you alive to where it lets you get up your full Lethal Tempo stacks, and the Lethal Tempo will do the work at that point. Divine Sunder's win rate and Bork's win rate rush on Warwick is dropped a lot since the uh, changes definitely worth just going on hit until lethal tempos nerfed i can't imagine them nerfing it though like they nerfed it for range champs but for them to nerf it for melees at this point i don't think it would happen what we need to start doing is going for objectives dragons heralds after a successful gank or if we know where the enemy jungler is I'm gonna go ahead and reset right now. Our R's on cooldown. We could push for dragon here. I'm sitting on a massive purchase on fire. It's gonna make us enormous. I'll go ahead and build for Merc Treads. They're super eight magic damage heavy. They're triple magic damage. Their only AD is set and Sivir. The only CC that Merc Treads are gonna help me against is basically Grag is slow and uh, RA Charm. That's about it. We'll play for a Herald. They might actually outscale us in a 5 versus 5. Depends on how efficient they stop the Samira Rs. We're going to go for Herald because we're also closer to it right now. We're on a massive power spike. Oh, Zach, Zach, Zach. Auto attack and the Q reset. Plus he was falling out of my range. Cancel his E with our R. All right, doesn't know where I'm gonna go. Auto attack, key reset, get the attach and the E fear. I need to wait for my red buff burn on her to finish. And preferably, yeah, I needed her to waste charm. Haha, <laughs> these minions, I can't really close in. I'd love to uh, get her underneath the turret. I think we can, she doesn't have boots. She's extremely low. She ends up backing now. Morgan is going to get some plates. Yeah, she's just going to reset. I got a plate out of it and I'll go get Harold. Not bad. Your worst matchups on Warwick are other lethal tempo, or I should say, 
The worst matchups on Warwick are junglers who can also take lethal tempo effectively. Things like Olaf and Trundle, although they don't take lethal tempo every game, it is their ideal keystone for fighting Warwick. So if you're up against an Olaf or Trundle and they don't have lethal tempo, you could definitely solo them easily. If they do have lethal tempo, a lot of times you have to watch out for Olaf Trundle. You only fight them based on your current HP versus their current HP, or if you have more items or some kind of advantage. Otherwise, things can go really badly. You also need to be using your E extremely well versus Lethal Tempo style junglers. Maximize the damage reduction on it. Until you get them to half health, you won't be... Uh, you won't be getting an insane amount of value. Dude, the value really kicks in when they hit 50% health for the 110% bonus attack speed. It's an incredibly high amount. Gragas is playing underneath his turrets. We could dive him. He should just back. Got him with red smite. Oh, he actually played that pretty well. Well played by Gragas. I had the option of using my uh, Q directly out, out of my R to dodge his or evade the CC from his belly flop. I didn't think he was going to do it immediately, though. It's a bit of a guessing game. If he held it, I would have like suffered immensely. But uh, yeah, he just used it immediately. Unfortunate. Didn't have much reaction time to react to it. We still would have lived. Well played by Ari. Going in for the roam there. Gonna go in for Titanic here. And we want to lay Herald before 14 minute mark. Yeah, this is what Zach needed to be doing the whole game. Just playing against my bot. He just got a shutdown. That's not good. Not good for us. Oh wow, he's, this guy really goes for it. He red smited me, lol. I decided not, I decided to hold on to Q. There's no reason to use it, just in case someone else showed up. I needed to dodge CC. You also save it for if they get outside of your base auto attack range, your Q has more range than your autos do. They're on uh, Scuttle right now. Auto attack into E. Sivir missed Q. I don't know what she thinks she's gonna do. I want Gragas to belly flop me in the double fear. We have lethal tempo max. We're also getting that flame touch from, uh, you see that big AOE when I land my autos or Qs. It just faded since we were out of combat for a while. Flame touch only affects champions and epic monsters. It's the strongest rune item synergy in the whole game. Lethal tempo with flame touch on the Sunfire Aegis. People don't really talk about it much, but it's what allows melee auto attack base, uh, particularly junglers, melee auto attack base junglers to take Sunfire, Aegis, and Lethal Tempo and get really good results. So you can see even a Master Yi do that. Nocturne, Olaf, Trundle. They can all Sunfire, Aegis, Lethal Tempo and get very high baseline results. For Warwick, it's out of necessity because you need to be able to clear your camps. If you don't have bombies or Tiamat, if you have neither, you just can't clear your camps and it's really bad. Yeah, we're still pretty tanky. <laughs> I'm soaking a lot of damage. I'll attack into Q, double fear. I'm gonna flash the wall. Things were getting kind of weird there. She still ended up dying, which is pretty sweet. My R is back up. Got him. Auto attack in the Q. Double fear. Morgana seems like such a good counter to set. She can Giga CC him, and then her black shield makes his R and his pull completely useless. And Set does all physical damage and true damage to where set can't even scrape the shield with one of his CCs. With mages, they can generally destroy the black shield with a single spell and then use their next spell to CC. Set doesn't even have that option. 
Morgana was a pretty smart pick versus their team. Especially if she goes for double burn, Leandre's demonic, she'll do insane damage and that's it. They quit. We'll go ahead and do a part two since they quit so soon. I'll see you guys there. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to part two. We have the same setup except we took tenacity this time because the volley bear stun and Leona stuns. She has essentially three of them plus vein potential stun. Uh, yeah, so we have tenacity this time. We're still going to be going for the same items. Sunfire Aegis into Titanic should do the trick. Looks like they didn't invade. They may actually get a kill out of it. Yeah, they got a kill. Up against Volleybear Jungle, this isn't Warwick's best matchup, but if Volleybear goes press the attack, you can definitely beat him. If he goes lethal tempo, it's really, really, really hard. If he, As long as he QEs, QE stuns you, where he stuns you inside of his E, there's pretty much no way for you to beat it if he has lethal tempo, but since he has press the attack, as long as we're full health and we E his initial burst, we should be able to wreck him. We're not getting a leash, that sucks, is what it is. If you don't get a leash on Warwick, it's not like you're going to die to your camps because you have such good sustain, but it does slow you down, and it hurts your uh, invade options a little bit. Went ahead and smited it, just to pull it over to me. The extra damage I take is irrelevant. Gangplank into Orn, Ari into Yasuo. And then I think the bot lanes are pretty even matchups. I think Leona might have the edge after shock advantage. Long fights, the lethal temple veins obviously gonna do more damage. So as long as my bot lane doesn't try to fight fight to the death full, from full HP, my bot lane should be fine. Volibear got to start out with a free kill, oof. What item is he gonna rush? Probably turbo chem tank, I'd imagine. You wouldn't go Sunfire Aegis on volley if you want to press the attack, I wouldn't think. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. It's not like it would be bad, but I mean he's gonna have to be able to close distance on GP and Kaisa backline this game. I don't really have to close distance. I just have to uh I have to do a good job of dodging a lot of their CCs, basically what I needed to do with my R. Dodge like the Orn R and all that stuff. Got a W on him. We have to Q immediately just to close. Nice Ari charm. Ooh, maybe flash auto Q kills him. It's hard to say. He's pretty low. About to run into Volley Bear. Yep. We have our Eon. He hits us with his shield though. Good thing Ari came over here. Volley Bear had a massive HP advantage and he also had the drop on me. Well played by the Ari. She gets double buffs out of it, so her not having Ignite isn't really going to hurt her. Going to cross through for opposite side Scuttle here. That's exactly what I was worried about. I didn't think Volibear would be that forward in the bush. I didn't think he had the time to get there. He was very preemptive with his positioning. Bot ends up getting a double. That's sweet. Very nice. All he's going to be on is Gromp, most likely. I need to stick around until I can get my Bomby Cinder. You don't really want to back before that. I don't think Yasuo saw me. Oof. Couldn't get to him. His shield soaked my damage as well. We'll get his ward. Still might be able to gank him. Depends on where Volley's at. Looks like he's uh, looping around for another ward, or maybe just keeping watch, I don't know. I'll go ahead and sell, well, I guess we could wait for the 30 gold. That's not a huge deal. I don't know if I'd want to sell my refill before full first item on Warwick against a scrappy jungle matchup. That'd be a little bit painful. We'll push out for Krugs, do a bit of a full clear. Top lane's not gankable, mid's not really gankable. Yasuo's playing off the back foot, and he's playing extremely submissive. We're only going to be able to kill him if we do a dive, and I'm not six. Yasuo's kind of annoying to dive to because of his passive and wind wall. It makes things complicated. Once Ari's six, it'll be really free. 
gonna put an auto on each one of these to apply our jungle item burn, take it a bit faster, get him to the half health mark. Warwick is all about getting enemies to the half HP and then you shred them with your autos super, super fast. Your W attack speed steroid 80% when they're below half health and that's tripled when they're bl below 20%. That was actually a decent CC by the Leona, but we still get the double fear. We were patient with our Q swing through to line it up. Not sure what Pike's Q cooldown is. But yep, there it is. Ooh, I'm getting minion blocked so hard. Took three or four shots there. I don't want to take any of these last hits. I do want to leech XP. Warwick's level six is a massive power spike. We need to get to that as uh, soon as possible. Plus the enemies are gonna miss that the enemies are gonna miss more XP than what I took from my teammates from the turret killing it. It also forces their support not to roam from base, which can be really dangerous for your teammates. Because they don't want to miss all that XP. It forces them back into the lane and uh, it keeps your team in a good spot. My ball line's gonna get scuttle there. Then we get to shred them. This is why you don't really want Bork anymore. Bork, I mean, the life still got nerfed too. It's been nerfed like twice within the last three months. Life still items have been nerfed uh, twice now, yeah. The Resolve Tree basically got nerfed. The best sustained runes in the Resolve Tree. Might as well just go Free Boots, Warwick, Cosmic. I would say go for Ravenous Hunter for all you Warwick connoisseurs out there, but they took away Ravenous Hunter. It's gone. You're left with very few options for your uh, rune choices on Warwick. The only thing else that I might go for is Celerity Water Walking. It's not like that choice is bad. It's just that I think Free Boots Cosmic is a little bit better. If you if you want to go for the Celerity Water Walking because you're going to play super aggro, that's fine. The value you'll get out of that will be decent. Level 6, pre-8 minute. Eh, okay, we're not hitting it early at all. That was not an early level six for Warwick. <laughs> GP's not gonna fall, he didn't flinch at all. We weren't gonna be able to kill him, but we could have done a lot of his health. I could tell GP wasn't gonna move though. Would have been a waste of time. Yasuo somehow gets a kill there. Huh. Did Volley gank? It's a little surprising. Maybe Volley's going for Dragon right now. I don't know. I wish my W was up so I could scout the area. Yep, he gets dragon. Is what it is. I'll get bot since my R's up. I don't need to take red buff first. My bot lane should be buying control words. I'm not going to walk in the volley, but he might have even pre-prepped his E there. Looks like he decided to run. Kaisa's kind of low on health. I don't think this is a good fight. Kaisa's missing too much HP. She's gonna get one shot by Volley R. It's too risky. Even though she has flash, like we don't know if Volley has flash. They also tier two boots, Volley no boots. Me and Volley have the same exact items. Yeah, we both have refill bombies. It's kind of funny. Volley Bear doesn't have to go for uh bombies rush because Volley has AoE on his E and on his passive. He can AoE clear his camps just fine. Full clear, 315 full HP. So uh, it's kind of funny seeing me and him on the same items. Warwick out of necessity. Him, I guess, just because he wants that item. Oof, he got the shutdown there. This is warded. It sucks. It's only like 10 seconds left. Wow, it's double warded. Love to go mid here. Being kept away by wards. But looks like Volley might be coming in for the counter gank. When he steps up for the next minion. Eh. I mean, we can R through his tornado. He's too close to turret. We're not going to have time to kill him. Ring people when they go to CC on Warwick is usually the best time to R them because not only are you dodging the CC itself, most abilities people have to stand still to cast so you kind of get to land your r for free when they do that oh good smite i almost had it he had a pretty tight timing there 
He does have more items than me now. I think we can solo him because lethal tempo. He also went blue smite, and I have red smite. Red smite's way better for fights to the death than blue smite. Blue smite's more for ganks. Or if you're playing a champion that completely lacks, like, mobility and CC, like Trindamir. Like, Trindamir jungle needs blue smite. That's a double fear. Red smited the Orn. I'll R volley. We should get his R here. Ah, uh, GP's not doing any damage yet. All he has is Sheen, really. Sheen and Longsword. Very low damage outputs from him. He also does have boots advantage, but he's also low health, so we're getting that bonus attack speed and movement speed. We should be able to make it work, especially if his flash is down. I'm gonna flash early. Q through him. He still had Ignite. That's a little surprising that he soloed Ari without blowing Ignite. That means he landed his knockup on her. He probably dashed through the minions and dashed on her. It's a common misconception about Yasuo of him having skill shots in his kit. He really doesn't. Everything he needs to land is a non-skill shot. He has a very, very easy way of doing it too. He can even like uh, EQ, flash. His, uh, his knockup is over a period of time. It's not one frame and then it's over. So he, he can like dash knockup and then flash on top of you and it will still count it. Where your human reaction time can't really react to it if he does it right. And it's not a skill shot. It's point and click when he does it like that. Realistically, throwing out tornadoes on Yasuo is not... It's usually bad. You only do it out of desperation or necessity. You don't do it when you have the uh, other option generally. Because it's pretty inconsistent. Auto attack Q through. Got the double fear. The Q through into E2 is so strong. It's like E1, Q through, E2, and then you, like what, like what you saw there, you get so much value out of double fear. It's almost impossible to lose the fight when you land it. Time for a reset. We're sitting on a massive gold purchase. We can get our Sunfire Aegis here in tier two boots against their team. I'm actually feeling the plated steel caps. They're pretty physical damage heavy. Next. Probably Titanic. We could go for Sterex. Funny enough, they nerfed it, which is interesting because no one really builds it anymore. They nerfed the shield he got it when it's already a fairly underpicked item at the moment. Yeah, that's a show up over here. Yeah, so he did end up going for the turbo cam because he doesn't have lethal tempo. He can't fight us at all. Wow. <laughs> My smite's on cooldown and the eye closed right when I went to hit it. That's super unfortunate. We should win this fight though, like I said. I have Sunfire Aegis. Sunfire Aegis does significantly more damage than Chem Tank over an extended period of time. I also have Lethal Tempo, which is the same story there. I don't really want them to get Dragon for free. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's only so much I can do with Veins here though. Got the Fear and the Auto Attack. Yeah, I think Vayne actually dies here. And now we win this 2v3. Because I'm Warwick with Lethal Tempo, Sunfire, Aegis. Oh, he ignited me. I got my Q on. We got Triumph feeling. Nice. I do think me and Ari still win that. That that really is the Sunfire Chem Tank diff. If he was Lethal Tempo with Sunfire, Aegis, I think they would have won that. Because Ari wasn't even full item there and Vayne had a uh, shield bow and her shield bow wasn't on cooldown either. She got a huge shield. Made it really challenging to kill her. We'll go for red buff. We'll swing up. We'll skip Krugs. My bot lane can have it. It's not good to leave your buffs up for an extended period of time. It's when they often get stolen when you're not taking them on spawn. So, uh, we'll go close that here. That's why I'm skipping the Krugs. My R is down, otherwise I would go mid right now. Orn's still not a full item. A little surprising. I guess it's because he invested in tier 2 boots. It's pretty expensive. We'll be getting Titanic fairly soon. Titanic plays extremely well with Warwick 
QW, R, and uh, Lethal Tempo. Titanic is an all hit effect. Your R applies on hit effects three times. Q applies at once. Plus Q's auto attack resetter, so auto Q. W is attack speed steroid, and obviously Lethal Tempo attack speed, attack speed steroid. So I, you almost always see Warwick build a Titanic. If he doesn't, it means he's giga far behind or he's just not very confident. You're super far behind. A lot of times it doesn't make sense to build because you're... You just die too fast. It's more of an item for when you're ahead or neutral. W for the attack speed bonus against him. The movement speed bonus here. Auto attack. Ooh, we didn't get the didn't get the Q reset there. He's moving too fast. Still got destroyed. Auto attack Q reset. We can walk out. Use our E damage reduction. Volibear was moving so much faster than us, even without tier 2 boots. We couldn't auto then Q. <laughs> he must have blue smited me. He was just moving so much faster. His, his Q movement speed bonus is very small. I believe it's doubled when he's moving towards champions, and he was moving away from me, and he's still up, giga out running me. So it really had to be blue smite. Stills your movement speed, gives it to them. There it's respawning in base. We could probably dive this here. I'll pop W since I'm behind. Yasuo's being greedy. We get the Q attached into fear. We only did that since we just killed them. They were spawning and they're probably around there. Yep, there they are now. We knew we had a like a eight to 12 second window. That's all you need. Greedy, greedy volley bear. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll reset for our Titanic. Can complete the purchase outright. We'll stay for these camps real quick while they're respawning in base. Might as well. It's too hard for them to push past that into our jungle because they won't have vision and they don't know if I stayed to take my own camps anyway. So it's just really high risk, low reward. I can take these reset and then take my own jungle. Since I can afford my item, I might as well. Don't do it, Kai. So don't do it. She was thinking about it. The eighty carry greed coursing through her veins. We play for so wait, this isn't. Oh yeah, okay. So we play for second Rift Herald here. I don't think this game it makes sense for us to go for Drag Soul. I think in the true late game they outscale with the Orin Yasuo R's with the Vein Lethal Tempo. Maybe if Kaisa had Lethal Tempo, we'd have a shot in the late game, but she doesn't. In my humble opinion, Lethal Temple Conquer are the two best keystones in the game by far. Auto attack Q reset. We're blocking his movement here really hard too. Block the Orn knockup, or at least dodged it with my Q. Auto attack. Oh, I missed that one. Looks like Vlybear still died. Got the attach. Hey, Yasuo. Hello. She's getting close to turret. I need a flash for this. Auto attack and a Q reset. We fear her on the rebound. This is going to be an FF 20 minute from them. This is getting brutal. They're not forming up properly. They're out of position and I'm on a really big power spike. Vayne isn't going to be able to keep up. Having the chase blind in a bush like that is going to do her in. And now we get Dragon. Very nice. Basically just slows down their soul just in case this does go late game. I believe Ocean Soul got nerfed as well. It was part of this overhaul of healing and shielding nerfs across items, monsters, uh, champion kits, all that fun stuff. I think it was kind of weird the way they implemented it. It was too broad of a stroke. It wasn't targeted enough. Like you're taking Warwick who, who already is in a high tier jungler and you're nerfing his self healing. It's just kind of weird. Very peculiar. I'll, I'll let her have it. Realistically, I should just take it because I'm so fed. It was very clear she wanted it with the way she was moving. She also set me up earlier when Volibear had me like in the one versus one or whatever. Oh, I'm under turret. 
that's not worth. Oh, okay, it's worth. I'm out of mana. <laughs> I can't move. That's such a bad fight for us. The turret played a huge role. We also weren't all there because my camps are too tasty to resist. Me running out of mana, I think, made the difference in that fight. Kaisa pinched. I don't think she should chase Orin. He has the base damage to kill her. At this point, you could go for Bork. I would lean more into Dead Man's or Force of Nature personally. All of your damage you need, we're already getting from, from like our W and Lethal Tempo primarily with, with, the, with the Flame Touch. Could go for Death's Dance. Holebreaker wouldn't be awful if you wanted to split. For now, I think Dead Man's is the move. If they're extremely AP heavy, then Wits End's a really smart item to purchase to get some good magic resist, get some good damage, but they're not. They're pretty much full AD. We wouldn't want something if it doesn't give us health or armor for the most part. Frozen Heart wouldn't be bad against them either. The Volley Bear, Yas, Vayne, even Leona are pretty auto attack based. Red buffs down. If we throw one more fight, they could very well win because Vayne. I mean, look at her items. She's two full item and partials. I'm only two full items, <laughs> two and a half. She, I have barely more items than her. Like double her kills because that's how shutdown gold works. It's easy to feel like you're ahead because you're like, oh, we got double their kills. Having double their kills doesn't matter because it's shutdown gold. If you lose your shutdown gold, you don't really have double their kills anymore. Didn't get the Q through on Vayne. Now I'm just gonna die. Ooh, wait. Oh, we're living for so long, holy crap. But I we think we kept getting triumph healings. Healing 10% of your missing health. That kept kicking in as we stayed alive for just long enough, holy crap. Woo! Let's take a look at the graphs. I have a feeling we did the first or second most damage and we took the second most damage. Looking at damage dealt, yep, we dealt the second most. Looking at damage taken, we actually took the most at 31k. That's a little surprising. 31k damage that we actually took. Let's look at self-mitigated. We took the most at self-mitigated at 28k. So we almost self-mitigated as much as we actually took. The later the game goes, generally you'll see self-mitigated becomes higher for tankier champions than the actual damage they took because they get more and more items. So they're mitigating more and more physical and magic damage. So in this case, we actually took more than we mitigated. And we took the most in both categories. Pretty happy with that. We were extremely tanky. And we still had the second most damage dealt in the game. Very happy with this Warwick build. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.